Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're here in Marrakesh, Morocco. And today what we have for you are things you should know before you come to Morocco for the first time because this is a really fantastic place. Lots of different regions, great colors, great food, great people. And so we're going to go through what you need to know before you come. And one of the questions people have is, Mark, do I need a visa to go to Morocco? Actually, more likely than not, you do not. If you're from Europe, from the US, Canada, no visa needed. So there's very few places that need a visa. So it's very easy to come here because they really want tourists to come, which is awesome. The thing is, when you come in, one thing I want to get you ready for is the line, you know, when you're coming through customs, might take a while. Now, you get lucky. It could be 20 minutes or it could take two hours. So be ready for that. And one of the reasons why it takes so long is inside your passport, they write a number down and that's like your tourist number. So when you're going to your hotels or your Riyadhs where you really should stay, I'll talk about the accommodations, they're going to have that number and you're going to use that quite often. Okay. So have a heads up for that. So. When you're at the airport, what I recommend is get some dirham, the local currency, when you are there because it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get it from outside the country, so you need to get it when you're here. So exchange some money when you get to the airport, when you arrive. Yes, the exchange rates aren't going to be that good, but at least you'll have some cash because Morocco is a cash-based society. You're paying cash all the time, okay? Now, credit cards, you can pay them at nicer restaurants and hotels and stuff like that. But if you're here in the markets and you're negotiating stuff, cash is what you're going to use, okay? Now, the dirham that they have, you can have bills and coins. The bills, there's a 200, a 100, a 50, and a 20 dirham bill. Also, you can get coins. The coins, there's a 10, a 1, a 5. I'll put the list up of all the coins that are up here too. And the thing is, you want to break those big bills because you want to tip and you want to give out the money and stuff like that. And the thing is, you don't have a lot of change here. People are always like, no change, no change. So you want to have smaller bills. Now, another thing is looking for ATMs. There's going to be ATMs at the airport. There's ATMs at the banks. They're not impossible to find. It's easier to find them in like the new towns versus like Medina places like this, but you can find some there. But just know cash is what you're going to need to have to get around. And the thing is when you're here, you're going to haggle a lot when you shop, but we'll go into a nice quieter place to finish this so we can actually talk a bit more about what you should know. But I just want to give you a feel for the Jamal Fna, the, the main square here in Marrakesh. It is a really cool place, but we'll go inside to talk about it. So we've come to the rooftops above Marrakesh to continue on with this because it got a little noise and a little crazy there in the Medina. And the thing is, <laughs> in the Medinas, not just the Medina here in Marrakesh, but Medina's around, you need to realize when you're going to be shopping, if you're going to be buying, you know, things, haggling is kind of a fact of life here when you are shopping. So if you're trying to buy rugs or some of these cool lamps that are here or even t-shirts and stuff like that, you will be bargaining a lot. Now, if you're a place like Marrakesh or in Fez, their Medina, where there's a lot of tourists coming, you're probably not going to get very much bang for your bargaining buck because they know there's more tourists coming here, but you can save money that way. Kind of expect to pay 25 to 50% less than the original asking price of the local, okay? Just to give you a heads up. Now, not everything's negotiable, but in general, there's usually some things you can do to kind of get through that. And I know a lot of tourists sometimes get upset with all the negotiations and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, I just wanna buy stuff and be done. Well, that doesn't work. You, you can get upset all you want. It's not gonna change things. You just need to realize haggling is part of buying things when you are here. Now, some things it's not. Like you go to a normal store, you're in the new town and stuff like that, the price is the price. But in the Soaks and the Medinas and things like that here in Morocco, you will be kind of bargaining quite a bit. So just have a heads up for that one. Going back to the money thing, I guess I should talk about the credit cards. You'll see a lot of places will have every single credit card imaginable on there that says, oh, we'll take it if they take them. The thing is, they won't like your American Express or your Discover. They prefer like the Visas and MasterCards, okay? So just have a heads up for that one. They'll prefer that. But again, this is a cash country, so you're gonna be using cash, all right? When you are doing this bargain, you're gonna be talking to the locals, right? And so you probably wanna know is, what's the language they speak here? Well, Arabic is the official language. Most people speak French as the kind of like working language kind of stuff that's here. And the thing is, if you're in tourism industries, so you'll find a lot of English, you'll find Spanish, all kinds of stuff. Cause a lot of Spanish tourists that come here, a lot of French tourists that come here, and actually has become a really kind of a popular destination and they're doing a lot to kind of improve the infrastructure and improve the tourist experience here so language wise you're not going to be too hard pressed you know some french you'll be fine but do learn a few words like the merci which is thank you in french and no merci which is no thank you or if you want to learn arabic shukram which is thank you or la shukram which is no thank you i know i'm butchering it but they'll get the idea when you're there just a few words can really make a big difference but the thing is the people are very friendly here which is really nice so they will help you out just know that sometimes they could be a little bit pushy when it comes to selling 
and stuff and things like that. But in general, the people are pretty chill here. So that's really nice. Now, if you're looking to get around the country, what you need to know is there's actually a decent train system. ONCF goes to a lot of places around the country, but most likely what you're going to be doing is taking buses to go places. Or if you can fly, do that. And the country is rather large. So, you know, going from Marrakesh, doing a real Sahara trip will take you eight to 10 hours in a car to get down there. So just be prepared for that, prepared for lots of distances, okay? Now to get around, there's cabs that are here, but make sure you negotiate the price of your cab before you get in so everything's on the up and up, just for a heads up for that one. Um, there are the Grand Taxis, the big taxis. The thing is the Grand is big, not like great, okay? So just have a heads up for that. You'll get more people in there, more smushed in, so have a heads up. And if you're going out to like towns that are kind of smaller towns and stuff like that, you might have many vans or many buses to do it, so just have a heads up for that. The thing you gotta realize is when you are here you know there's all kinds of different regions that are here and a lot of people ask well mark where should we go how do i see it all well what you need to know is there's four main regions here in morocco you've got the mountains and yes there's some mountains there behind us but the atlas mountains and stuff like that go far down you have that you have the sahara desert okay you have that region you have the coast and the other plains where we are right now and what i recommend is don't try to do every single thing because the country is actually really really large and so maybe pick a couple areas to focus on when you are here that will make things a lot easier. Also, I think I should talk about the weather now because if you look back there, if you can actually see the mountains, there's snow on top of them. Yes, snow. Look, in the winter time, if you're coming in November, December, January, February, March, it does get chilly here. I'm not saying it's cold. I'm just saying it's chilly. Like every morning we're putting sweatshirts on to go see the city. I mean, we take it off by 10 or 11. And then at night when the sun goes down, it does cool off a bit. And what you need to know, if you're going to be doing one of those Sahara tours and things like that, the differences in the temperature between day and night is very extreme. So make sure you do have multiple layers if you're going to be coming. Okay, so a heads up for that one. Also, if you're going to be coming in the summer, man, if you're here May through August, we're talking it can get to 50 Celsius in the hundreds in Fahrenheit, and it can be very hot. And the thing is, you want to make sure you're keeping hydrated, okay? And in Morocco, stick to the bottled water, okay? Just stick to the bottled water. It's probably a better bet for your tummy when you're doing that, so do use the bottled water when you are here. Now, some other things we need to talk about is one thing is people like to ask, what about the Wi-Fi? Do they have internet there? I'm like, yes, the internet's everywhere, people. I mean, the internet here has been fine. I've been on YouTube. We've watched movies. The kids are watching their Netflix and stuff like that at night before we go to bed. No problems there. I have seen in the, the Riyadhs, the hotels, the Wi-Fi runs pretty fine. Uh, some of your sites might be a little bit slower than you're used to, um, also, some apps might not work when they're here. They might be controlled here, so be careful with that. But in general, having any problems. One thing I will say though, with cell service and cell coverage, if you're gonna be going and exploring, you're going to the Sahara Desert, you're going up into the mountains, your cell coverage will obviously drop off a bit. So just have a heads up for that. So if you're gonna be doing hikes and things like that, and you think, oh, my cell will help me out, make sure you let you know your hotel you're staying in or your Riyadh or whatever, what your plans are so they know if you're coming back or not, just, just to be safe. But in general, not too many worries that you wouldn't expect in a, in a normal country like this, okay? Another thing, if you're looking at plugging your devices, because look, you're gonna be taking tons of pictures when you're here, it's place is beautiful. It's not just the blue city in the north. I mean, there's in the mountains. I mean, there's just, just so much cool things to see here. You're going to want to plug things in. And it's a standard European plug, you know, the two circle things. Standard plug to use here, no problem at all. So that's kind of nice. Now, another thing people like to know when they travel is, Mark, is it safe when you go to Morocco? We found Morocco to be actually pretty safe. I mean, I haven't had any issues there. I mean, there's going to be the usual pickpockets in the Medina kind of thing, just like you have pickpockets at the main sites in Rome and things like that. Also, female travelers, I do recommend you dress conservatively when you are here because there have been issues about that. I know Jocelyn has talked to us. If you watch our Five Love and Hates of Marrakesh, she'll talk about how sometimes she felt kind of left out of things because it was kind of like the male tourists were treated a little bit different than the female tourists. So do have a heads up for that. If you are a female tourist coming to Morocco, I highly 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 recommend Morocco mama it's a website you can go check out the lady lives here and gives all kinds of great advice for females traveling to morocco so that's one thing i would look out for that and go check out her site but in general your safety you're going to be pretty okay here probably the biggest safety issue you're going to have is when you're on the road okay or when you're walking near the road because you will see there's cars there's buses there's donkeys pulling carts there's mopeds there's motorcycles there's bikes all kinds of stuff going, so it can be a bit dangerous. So make sure you're always paying attention. If you got your little kids, make sure you keep them with you when you, when you are here and next to you, especially in the Medina. I mean, people aren't gonna steal your kid, but the thing is they could get lost and it's very easy to get lost. And I guess that could be a safety thing, because I did see some tourists freaking out. Where are we? Where are we? Are we the right place in the Medina? 
look, you'll find your way out. It's always important to keep a map with you when you're one of the bigger cities with the Medinas like in Fez and stuff like that, or here in Marrakesh, you want to do that. If you're in like Casablanca, it's not a big deal. Casablanca is a, is a modern city, you know, with the modern buildings and stuff like that. And the thing is, is when people think of Morocco, they usually think of the Medinas kind of stuff. What you have to realize is Morocco is a very, you know, very advanced, I mean, it's, it's a normal country, so there's normal cities too. And they'll have the new city and then the old town, the Medina part. So you can have those two different areas, okay? Another thing is you might want to look at accommodation when you're coming here. Now, Morocco is putting a lot of money into tourism infrastructure to build new hotels, new resorts, getting people to go to the beach and surf there and stuff like that. So you do have a wide variety of accommodations when you come here, hotels, resorts, things like that. You can look around. If you're going to the Sahara Desert, yes, you can sleep in the tents and do those kind of things. It's really pretty cool. But for my ba biggest bang for the buck, the best experience for us is staying at Riyadh's. And what a Riyadh is, it's basically a multi, it's a multi-family home that has a courtyard in the center that's now been turned into a hotel. And the thing is these courtyards will be gorgeous with plants and stuff like that and they've done up a lot of them really nice inside. A lot of the Riyadh's will have wonderful restaurants inside too or they'll have where I'm at now up on the rooftops where you can have drinks and stuff like that and it's really really a great thing. But there is a lot of accommodation options. You won't have a, too much of a trouble with that. Um, another thing is sometimes people want to know is hey when do I sign up for my tours? Or right? Should I do tours and stuff like that? Here in Morocco I do recommend doing tours because if your French isn't very good or your Arabic or your Berber is not quite there the tour guides really make things a lot easier especially negotiations and stuff like that. It just makes things a little bit easier on you so do have a heads up so you might want to consider that and the thing is you don't have to sign up for a tour like months in advance. If you're coming here your hotel your Riyadh your resort they can set up tours for you just fine so you do have that okay and there is a ton of tour <laughs> tour guides here and people try to sell you things. I recommend booking from your hotel because if a thing goes wrong you can yell at your hotel versus when you book it on the street they're like hey whatever okay so that is one thing and that's one thing I have anywhere in the world okay you, you book from a hotel just see so if somebody yell out if things go wrong. Now another big part of tourism is actually the food and the food here in Morocco is wonderful and the thing is most of it is grown here in Morocco so if you're on the coast you're eating the fish if you're here in the plains you're having the vegetables and the fruits that are grown here you have all kinds of really great locally produced foods like you won't see a ton of food you know at, at the stores and stuff like that or in the markets but you will see the food and you're like wow look at all the spices look at all those veggies and those fruits you will eat really well when you are here and the thing is you have this thing called tagine okay and tagine you, you'll see it on there like oh tagine it's one thing no tagine is is this pot you'll see it's like a pyramid pot you know and, and they cook it in there into like a stew kind of thing and the thing is you can have rabbit you can have lamb you can have beef you can have chicken in it and there's all kinds of different flavors i know we had a one was onion and rabbit oh my god it was so good well you'll probably find a lot there's a beef one that we actually made at a cooking class that's here you can do there's one that's a chicken and lemon which is always like a nice backup kind of stuff so you can have that but there's a lot of different tagines out there that you can have so that's kind of an easy go-to one that'll be all over the place also couscous is very popular here which you might have with it couscous is a big friday kind of thing so it might come as a side dish on a friday or if you're in some of the smaller towns my couscous might not be available unless it's friday so you do have that but we have a whole video on with actually a local chef talking about the food here in morocco so if you check down below we'll put the link up for you so you can do that she also does uh, cooking classes so that could be something for you another thing is when you're looking at what you're going to drink when you're here like i said stick to the bottled water when you're here in Morocco but the probably the tastiest thing to drink when you are here is the mint tea and the mint tea is kind of like a welcome drink so if you go to your Riyadh or your hotel they might have a, a mint tea for you just to start off or you're negotiating for your your carpets or whatever mint tea is kind of a popular thing it's really really good so you definitely have to have that when you're here also bread is like a staple here you have fried bread you have baked bread you have normal bread you have all kinds of different breads when you're here so just know if you're a carb person you got some problems because it's not just the bread it's also lots of pastries that are here that are really good there's one that i've had i've actually it's it's a pastry with chicken inside and nuts in it and it was so good they actually have a dessert version of it which was chocolate and dried fruits in it i'm like oh my god it was amazing. So there's a lot of really good food you can have when you're here. Now, another thing you should know is, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm going to Morocco. It's a Muslim country, so there won't be any alcohol. Well, in Morocco, they're pretty laid back. Like they're pretty open to everybody. And that's what's cool about Morocco. They're very open for all kinds of people. And the thing is, if you like alcohol, you can come here. If you're going to drink something, I highly recommend the Moroccan wine. I mean, we've had some really good Moroccan wines, reds, whites, grays, 
really good stuff. So drink the local wine when you're here, you'll be fine. Now, I'm not saying come here for like a bender or coming here for a bachelor stag party kind of stuff. You don't do that in Morocco, okay? But the thing is, you can enjoy some really nice wine when you are here. Now, another thing I kind of want to talk about with, with religion here is one thing you need to realize is unless you're Muslim, you will not be allowed to go into the mosque. They're beautiful from the outside. You want to go in, but you're not allowed. Now, in Casablanca, this is a big one you can go into there. You can see that, but it's kind of disappointing. She's like, man, all these buildings are so beautiful inside versus outside. Outside, I can only imagine how beautiful the mosques are on the inside, but you can't see it as a tourist unless you're Muslim. So if you want to see it, go online to see some of the pictures. You'd be like, wow, it is gorgeous. Because literally, when you go inside the buildings in Morocco, it's so much more beautiful than the outsides of the buildings. I mean, the doorways are beautiful, but once you go through the doorways, the interior parts of homes and stuff like that, and Riyadh and stuff are just gorgeous with the courtyards. And the thing is, you're going to want to take a lot of pictures of these courtyards, of these doorways and stuff like that. And taking pictures is fine. I will warn you, though, if you're going to be taking pictures of people, you need to ask them beforehand and they might say no so you need to respect that or they might say yeah sure but you got to pay me you got to give me a tip to take the picture and don't be like oh i don't have any money then don't take the picture okay because they'll follow you around and the thing is if you're going to be going to the markets like here in marrakesh you'll see the snake charmers and you'll see the people with the monkeys and the animals and all kinds of stuff you want to say oh come take a picture whatever realize you're going to be paying those people to take that picture and don't sit there and take a ton of pictures and go oh i don't have any money or anything like that believe me they will follow you and no one's going to feel sorry for you when they're like give me some money come on you got to tip me this is how we make our living because that is how they make their living okay so just have a heads up for that and just respect things now if you're taking like you know pictures of the beautiful moss on the outside and in the medinas and things like that that's okay but if people go like this you know when you're going by shops be respectful for that because that, that's one of the things we as tourists need to do is respect the people when we are there so we've got three things left we're going to talk about the prices we're going to talk about the people and we're going to talk about the places you want to visit when you're here in terms of prices Morocco is actually not that bad. I mean, honestly, we're staying a really nice hotel for a fantastic price. Now, it's not cheap, but it is an affordable place to visit. Where you really save your money is where you're eating. You get this amazing food when we're here, which we talked about. But the thing is, it's at a fraction of the price you'd have something, you know, in Western Europe or in a big city in the U.S. I mean, a nice meal in Marrakesh on the square, which is obviously tourist dragged up prices. The four of us ate there with dessert for about $67, $68. I mean... I can't do that at TGI Fridays with my family in my little town I live in. So the thing is you will do, your money will go far when you're doing stuff here. So that's kind of a nice thing to know, okay? Another thing I wanna talk about are the people. The people in Morocco, super friendly, super funny, super kind. And the thing is, is if you got kids, get a local jersey. We've got our kids the Morocco jersey and everyone's like, hey, people take us to their houses and not asking for money either. You know, to do it like, hey, no, no, here, hey, that's cool. You got his jersey. Awesome. He's, he's a Borussia Dortmund now. And it's so funny because we got a video where we're walking through the Medina and you just hear people calling out our kids because their jerseys. It's pretty cool. But the thing is, people are really nice. Yes, they can be pushy when it's in the sales position. So just relax with that. But they're still actually very friendly in general. And they're very welcoming. That's one of the nice things. The Moroccans are very, very welcoming, which is very different than other places you go and travel to. It's like now, yes, there's lots of tourists that come here, but they're still welcoming for all those tourists. So that's really a nice thing. And if you're looking at places you want to go, okay, the famous places. Okay, so Marrakesh, that's probably the most go-to one for a lot of people. Here you've got the Medina to see when you're here. You've got some museums. You've got the Bahia Palace you can go check out. You have that. If you go up to Fez, and Fez, that Medina is even cooler than this one. The Medina is the marketplace. You have that. You can go up in the north and see Chef one, the blue city, the one you've seen all the Instagram pictures, the one that's on the Mor like all the Moroccan tours and stuff. You can go see that. You can do a tour in the Sahara. And I'll tell you, when you're going to do a tour for the Sahara, look, one, two days. No, you need to do a few more days because how far it is. And the thing is, you want to make sure when you go, you want to go for the one that starts or goes through Merzoga, okay? The thing is, I'm sure to say it wrong, so that's why I spell it down there. But when you're doing that one, the Sahara tour that starts through there or goes through there, that's probably the one that's going to give you a better bang for your buck than the other ones. So you do have that, okay? Also, you could do, you can of course hit the coastline and stuff like that. Casablanca though, I would say Casablanca is more of a, you know, it's an industrial city, so financial city, so not great for the tourism, but still a good place to fly out of, because I know we're heading to Casablanca and we're actually gonna fly out of there because I got really good cheap tickets to Portugal from there. So that was really cool. Anyway, I hope this helps you know a little bit more about what you should know before you come to Morocco. It really is a fantastic country. We've really enjoyed it. The people have been really great. The food's been great. Really cool things to see. A wonderful place, really pretty safe to go see too. So I hope you have a good time. Oh, there is one safety thing I'm going to tell you about. The stray cats. You will see a lot of stray cats when you're here. Don't pet them, okay? Just FYI. I know they're cute. I know they're cuddly. 
but don't do it, all right? So I'll say bye for Morocco, and if you want to find more, The 10 Shocks of Visiting Morocco, What You'll Love and Hate About Bar Visiting Marrakesh, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. And if you want to learn more, hit that subscribe button. We put out new travel videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Also, we'd like to say a big shout out, thank you, merci, <laughs> to, our, uh, to our patrons on Patreon for helping make this possible. So we'll see you later, and we wish you a great time here in Morocco. Bye.